ready for the first of two semifinal qualifying heats in the men's 55-meter hurdles. The records you see listed are for the distance of 60 yards, which is only one inch different than 55 meters. Nehemiah, of course, shelved by injury right now. Greg Foster has had a thoroughly dominant indoor season and will try to qualify, along with two others, into the final. And he will be running in lane three. Perhaps his primary competition will come from Cletus Clark, running next to him in lane four. The Frenchman, Karastan, in lane six, can also be expected to compete. There's a good look at Clark. We widen out to see once again Greg Foster in lane three, who, if he moves on into the final, will take another step toward clinching the overall Grand Prix championship. He's never looked more confident than he has this year, Evelyn. He certainly hasn't. This is Greg's best year, as far as I'm concerned. And you always watch his mental outlook carefully because he is a somewhat unpredictable athlete. But this time, he came out of the block very well and will cruise on, well, maybe not, had to lean at the finish to get third place and get into the final as Karastan closed with a rush on the outside to win the race. And Cletus Clark appeared to finish ahead of Foster as well. I was just about ready to shoe him on into the final when the other hurdlers rushed past him. Yes, Greg's start was fine. He looked very good, but he didn't have the speed and momentum that the other hurdles had going over the last few hurdles. And this is very surprising for me. This year he has showed that he can go faster over the last few hurdles. And here he had to lean forward in a battle with the man just inside of him, Andrew Parker of Arizona State, and it appeared to me that Foster got the lean, finished third, and moved on into the final. But a close call for Greg Foster. Well, Jim, you said it. Foster's an unpredictable athlete. It looked like the fourth or fifth hurdle. He just shattered it. We're going to have to wait and see on the photo. He may not have qualified for the final. Well, we've just been given the final results of Heat 1, Marty, and you can see that along with Karastan and Clark, Greg Foster just did make it into the final. So now, the second semifinal heat features the man who will be in the middle of the track in lane three mark mccoy of canada 25 years old last year's grand prix winner in this event defending champion co-holder of the world record at 60 meters with foster next to him tony campbell the american outdoor champion last year and again three men go on into the final good start for mccoy over the middle hurdle. Here comes Tony Campbell. They'll make it in. A rush for third place, but it looked to me as though it may have been Blake in lane five. Arthur Blake of Florida State, a 20-year-old sophomore, who moved on along with those two. Mark McCoy and Tony Campbell safely into the final, and a great start for McCoy, Evelyn. McCoy has very good speed over the hurdles, and in between the hurdles, he's a very quick, fast runner indoors. Next to him, Tony Campbell came on in the late hurdles and easily secured second place so it will be a strong and star-studded final field in the 55 meter hurdles and right now let's go back to marty lacory well mark uh, your heat didn't have a lot of false starts but the first one with greg foster did do you think since that race in la with the supposed false start that the starters are really oh, watching you fellas well over the years the hurdles have always had a lot of controversy on the start last year this year greg's world record got his iffy because of his start I know, just the hurdle seemed real jumpy. And of course, in a 55-meter race, the start is often where you win or lose. So, all eyes will be on the now seemingly not-so-invincible Greg Foster when he and Mark McCoy come out of the blocks in the hurdle final. 